Okay, on the bench today we have um, basically the the uh, the radio that was used in the Vietnam War and all the way up through, I guess, uh, the 80s and 90s. It's still being used all over the world. This is a green backpack radio, and um, I collect military surplus radios and repair them just because I love the way they built them and the mechanisms inside. Uh, this one you know, is pretty well beaten up on the outside as they tend to be. It was well used and we're going to see if this works. Uh, I'll go over um, some of what uh, this radio came with. There's a rattling noise because inside there's an old handset. It's hard to just one hand. I'll show you. I got the back cover off. Uh, it's got the handset here with the wire cut off. Um, this one's a um, H189GR. It's interesting to see this equipment because, you know, I'm a big fan of Tech and Magellant or HP stuff, but um, when you look at, if you want to see something really well built, take a look at a military backpack radio or some other mill spec gear. It's absolutely incredible. It looks rough on the outside, but the inside is um, is impressive. Uh, this one was built by um, Electrospace Corp. It looks like a date, a manufacture date of '68. And we'll take a look at um, what it looks like inside. Okay, I've got this open. It's got three, um, or sorry, four screws. They just come out nice and easy. There's a gasket all around here. This thing is totally waterproof, down to I believe 20 feet of water. I talked to some uh, guys who used to service these things back in the day, and they actually would put them in a pressure tank, like a, a, not unlike a wristwatch, and test it to depth. So uh, there's a rubber gasket, so it makes it a little tough to open it. There's actually a screw back here you can undo to, to, to equalize the air pressure inside here if you have any trouble. Uh, so let's open this up and show you what something really high quality uh, <laughs> looks like. So. I mean, you know, I know that we're into, a lot of folks are into Agilent to, or old HP gear and whatnot, but this is, this is built much better than that stuff. I mean, this is just, this is incredible how well built this stuff is. Uh, these are all, um, these screws have, are, are spring-loaded and, and uh, they're captive, so they don't go anywhere. We'll unscrew these. This whole top part will pop open. See the uh, there's the back plane. Uh, here's the inside. So if you turn these knobs here, you know this is the megahertz uh, selection. You can see uh, all the various linkages, and there's an antenna tuner that's uh, gets more light out, that's moving up and down here. And similarly, in the kilohertz uh, selector, which is right here. That one too is geared to all these guys. You can barely see them, but they're moving. Everything's moving when you turn the knobs. That's quite impressive. Uh, you know, if there are electrolytics and relays and all kinds of stuff from Electrospace Corporation. This is definitely, you know, high end. Look at all the interconnects. I mean, those little those blue card slots for the uh, for the circuit uh, modules and whatnot. I mean, this is high end stuff. So, uh, oh yeah, here's the power connector in the back. There's two rubber gaskets and the, the uh, grease there. Even waterproof. Believe it or not, this is actually OEM. I thought this was an afterthought fix, but that's that's how they built them. This is the ground braid. That is how it was originally done. Okay, we'll flip it over and take a look at it. Okay, you can see those, you know, blue uh, you know, connections everywhere. I mean, it, you know, let's flip this thing over. Yeah, here's the inside. And more modules. Each of these modules, you can actually pop the screw off and they come straight out. So you can actually replace it on a modular level or service the module if you have an extender. Um, you know, here's another neat thing. This is the, the band switch here. It's got, it covers a huge frequency range of 30 to 75 megahertz. So when you flip this from one band to the other, 
there's this mechanical linkage that goes through and changes all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, there's the bottom portion of that antenna tuning unit, which happens just you know as you turn the knobs, uh, it just <laughs> goes by itself. More linkages and things like that from switching from A to B band. Uh, there must be the dial light. So really cool stuff. Um, we'll power it up and test it on the bench and see if it works. I mean, this is a very old unit. Uh, some of the date codes uh, inside look like 67. So um, it's, it's old. Let's see if it uh, works and, and uh, learn if uh, the, reli the famous reliability of these radios holds true. I mean, they're, they're still being used uh, in nations across the world, interestingly enough. Um, and they're known for reliability. So we'll fire this thing up and give it a shot and test it. Okay, so here we have the SCR, sorry, the um, PRC-77 uh, connected up. So I have an old mic connector that was cut off short and I just wired it into this breadboard. Uh, I've got a um, 120 volt uh, filament transformer for the purposes of impedance matching to a standard 8 ohm speaker. Get this out of the way here. I've got a um, input for SIGGEN into the mic audio uh, input there to make sure that um, that this thing can actually transmit FM and I've hooked up a, an attenuator in the output of the RF so that uh, the, the transmitter um, output spectrum can be uh, measured. And of course, uh, in the back, uh, connections for 12 volts uh, to this bench supply here. You know, and we'll give it a shot. We'll, we'll test for um, transmit output power spectrum, make sure it's getting the modulation, and uh, we'll test for RF sensitivity. Turn on the power here. And of course, no problem. Your squelch mode, and there's the light. So uh, no troubles there uh, to transmit, we'll uh, just tie this pin right here. Okay, so I'm going to go to the spectrum analyzer now, reference level 30. Okay, so we'll hit transmit and um, peak search. So like we're getting some modulation but she's around 23 uh, dBm or so and uh, oh yeah yeah and and this thing is um, definitely hitting the two watts I have a 10 dB pad in there so she it's two watts or better uh, output power so next we'll feed it um, some modulation, see if, see if we can uh, see it on the spectrum analyzer. We're already starting to see a little bit of dancing around because of uh, AC hum being picked up from the uninsulated wires. Okay, so I've got um, a SIG gen connected uh, with one killer, it's 10 millivolts, which should be more than enough to modulate this radio. And we'll key it up. And there you can see the FM waveform up there, definitely, even measure, span, you can go 100 uh, kilohertz, you can actually see the span, so it looks like it's a um, marker, yeah, I'm going to transmit 50, we're right on 50, right in the middle, dead, dead on, yeah, uh, 20-ish kilohertz, bandwidth 2030. Pretty cool. And if we unhook the modulation, well, it's picking up AC line right now, but there's your modulation. Okay, the radio is transmitting. Okay, so here we have SIGGEN peaked up. The AM modulation. And you can still hear it down to minus 120 dBm going through a 10 dBm pad. So she's picking up you know, minus 130 dBm, at least to the human ear. I mean, I think uh, MDS will probably be 
five to ten over this. So I would say it's safe to say that uh, signal level right about here would probably be very uh, well um, understandable, and, and, and you'd understand what the person sitting on the other end. So this thing's definitely really, really sensitive. So that's looking good. Got a new old stock uh, antenna base, and uh, I don't think this is new old stock. Uh, definitely not these. And a new old stock battery from 2008. So we'll install these and see how it works.